Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be checking out the new UISP router. In a video I did last week, we checked out the new UISP switch. I am still waiting on one device to release from early access to finish this full build. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. If you'd like to support the channel, we do have affiliate links down below. And one of those affiliates is Hostify, and they do support UISP cloud controllers. For this video, I'm not going to do an unboxing because it's the exact same as the UISP switch. The only difference is this could route. If you put these two side by side, you probably wouldn't be able to tell which is which. But on the side, you could see that R, which means router, and the switch has an S. Let's take a look at the specs for this router. These are ideal for WISP deployments or wireless ISPs. It's a fanless PoE router and it has eight RJ45 27 volt passive PoE ports. Most of these PoE ports would be used with point to point antennas or point to multipoint. We also have one SFP port, which does one gigabit. It comes with a 110 watt power supply and it has fanless thermal cooling. And we could wall mount this if we'd like. And we have to adopt this into our UISP controller by our USIP app on our phone. The price point of this router is $159 USD MSRP. So this is the topology that we're going to be working off of. Today, we're just going to be focusing on the router. And once that other device comes to the general public, we'll put this whole scenario together. But we have my UISP router and that will be connecting to an uplink ISP connection. From the router we'll be connecting to the switch and then the switch to Gigabeam plus 60. We'll be doing a point to point to another Gigabeam plus 60 to an Enterprise 8 switch. And off that Enterprise 8 switch we'll have a Unify 6 Pro access point. So now I'm going to bring my phone up on the screen and we're going to get the UISP router adopted into our controller. All right, so now we're in the UISP app on my iPhone and we could see that it says the network is empty. I don't have my switch in this UISP cloud environment. We're going to press the plus button in the bottom and then we're going to add the UISP router and we could see that it could be adopted using Bluetooth. You'd also scan the QR code or you could hit the plus button and use the IP address. We're going to adopt it with the Bluetooth. Now it's bringing us to the router setup and it's going to ask us for a router name. I'll just call it router. And then we'll press next. I have it plugged into the wrong port right now. You can see that it's plugged into port eight, but it needs to be plugged into port one or the SFP port for our WAN connection. So I'll go ahead and switch that. And we're going to be getting our settings by DHCP, but if your ISP modem had a static IP or PPPoE, we could switch that in these settings. Now it's finishing up the setup, and once that's done, we'll look at this UISP router on my computer. All right, now we can see that the router is added into the UISP, and we can see the name, the type, the model, the firmware status, the service uptime, the uptime, the MAC address, IP, CPU, RAM assigned to, and we don't have a site assigned, but once I get that other device, We'll create a site and then put everything together. Then we have uplink, downlink, and uplink utilization. If we click on the router, it will bring up the router page. At the top, we could see ports one to nine and we could see things that are connected going at one gigabit per second, 100 slash 10, disabled or disconnected. And we could also see what ports are getting power. Under general, we could see the IP, MAC address, model version, uptime, CPU usage, memory, latency, and service uptime. We could also click here to see more statistics. We would see uplinks and downlinks. The downlinks are just showing my subnet of my UDM Pro, which I have connected. All these devices aren't connected into UISP. And then we have our subscribers, which there's no data found. We take a look at our interfaces. We could do interface configuration here. If we click on port two, we could turn the PoE on or off. So we could have 27 volts or we could have 27 volts for a pair. We'd also change the speed. Under the speed, we have our configuration. So we could give the port a name. We could change the MTU size, MSS clamping, IP address, proxy ARP, or we could disable this port. Now this is where the router has a bit of a different interface than the switch did. So here we have our services, which we could have SSH, Ubiquity Discovery, MDNS, and UPnP. And then we could specify different DHCP servers. We could also add a DHCP lease. We could see more settings available in the old device details. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. Under manage, we could change the device name and then we could assign it to a site if we had a site. We locate the device, restart, we could change the firmware version, 
backups, maintenance mode, credentials, download device info. And the credentials is what we would use to log in to an SSH session. We could look at advanced, we could do debug, or we could forget the device from the UISP controller. Now let's click on the more settings available in the old device detail. So here we have another graph. We could see the UISP router uptime, and then we could see our throughput and our latency, which our latency is four milliseconds. We'd also see our IP address. From the interfaces, we could click on the three dots and we could configure the interface if we'd like. We also have this switch zero. So if we click on those three dots again and go configure, we could give it a name and then we could give the IP address of what we would get if we plugged into any one of these ports, so ports two to nine. And we could take out ports that we don't want to be participating in the switch zero. Now, if we take a look at the left-hand pane, we have routing, DHCP, firewall services and settings. So if we go into our routing, we could set either a static route or we could set up OSPF routing. So a dynamic routing protocol, which we will get to after we build this topology. I'll add some more routers as well as some different point to point gear. We could set up a DHCP server as well as a static DHCP lease. And then we could look at our firewall rules. So under our firewall, we have post routing NAT rules and then we have pre routing NAT rules. And then we have our basic firewall rules. So allow established and related and drop in valid state. And that's done under our WAN in interface. Then we have a few LAN local and we'll go through firewall rules later on in a different video once the whole setup is complete. And also in our firewall, we could create groups. So we'd give this a name and we could give it a type. So it could either be an IP address, Mac or by port. Also under the settings, we could go into a terminal inside of the UISP router. So now we're in the router login and we would need to have our login, which would be UVNT as well as that password. We take a look at our logs, which will show us what's happening with the UISP router. And we could also take a look at outages, statistics, Mac table and backups. So that's our first look at the UISP router. Once that other device comes out, we will do this full build and see how we configure it with firewall rules. And then once I get a couple more routers, we could do some OSPF. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.